All right, guys, we're about ready to get started here in the NHLC studios here in the city of Plano, Texas. It's a place for you guys to join me. Got a few more shows I'm going to bring in to get ourselves started here on this particular afternoon as we get ourselves in position. Got a few things I want to take care of here before we get to moving. Uh, here at uh, HLC Studios, just give me a kind of a okay. We want to make sure we get everything kind of tied in here. If we get ourselves in position, as I say once again, it's a place for you guys to join us here in the studio here at HLC Studios. Going to get started. Going to go back over in the Book of Philippians. Um, kind of get want to get the rest of our uh, actually program uh, the rest of our team rolling in here uh, give me about a few minutes want to kind of get everything lined up as we get ourselves going here got a few more things I got to pop in here uh, we already got our actually breaker program running through our actually um, our actually Spreaker show so we're going to get you guys here coming in from my actually um, my Facebook channel here I'm going to crank up our actually YouTube channel. We're going to get everybody moving here. Usually get in about 10.30. It's about 10.25 right now. I'm about five minutes ahead of you guys. So I'm going to get in and get going and make sure we get some um, we get a solid teaching on tonight as we get ready to push ourselves in on this word here at HNOC Studios. want to get our actually YouTube station in here get them moving here. So Earlier today, you guys were with us. We was over in the book of Philippians. And we talked a little bit about Apostle Paul's, how he had came to the point that he felt like in his walk, he hadn't obtained all that he needed to obtain. He really spoke a powerful word. Matter of fact, this word that came forth this morning, I didn't even know my wife was teaching on this word. My wife came back and pretty much did the same thing. And that was amazing because she was studying on something else. I didn't know what her message was going to be. And she studied it out. She was dealing with that process of uh, dealing with the fruit seekers, part three. And she was talking about that. But it so happened, and I was listening to a message her day, and I was looking over there in the book of Philippians, and I heard her come out of the same thing. How the Apostle Paul spoke in Philippians chapter uh, 3 and that 13 verse, Brethren, I do not count myself to have been apprehended. But one thing I do know, forgetting those things which are behind, I reach forward to the things which are ahead. And it's an amazing scripture when Paul talks about this. Because Paul is really dealing with the point that he have not obtained and not that he will be apprehended. And well, there's nothing that can stop me, but at the same time, I'm not going to let the issues of my past and what I was being a stickler of the law hold me back for the progress of what I accepted on the road to Damascus and moving forth. And sometimes we look at Apostle Paul's life, it's kind of like our situation. You look at just the road to Damascus. You know, Paul may have been going out doing things to people that wasn't quite right in the eyesight of God. I mean, he was actually getting letters from high priests, killing the priests, uh, killing the people of the church of the way. And um, sometimes there's things we do that's not pleasing to God. And the process of doing things, we sometimes we get ourselves caught in the middle of doing something that Christ really wanted us to refrain or restrain ourselves from. But we continue on doing it, thinking we can get away with it one more time. And sometimes that one time can be your last time. It's not always in a situation where God's going to take you out of here, but he will discipline you to the point to let you know that he means business about what he's doing. Now, Paul's situation is a little different, but it's pretty much the same for all, all of ours. But in Paul's situation, he met Jesus Christ to the point that he really had to come to his um, uh, his calling in terms of what he was doing now, when he was persecuting God's uh, children, the word of God came to him and said, Paul, Paul, why are you persecuting me? Now, was the people of the Church of the Way, we know they was Christian people that was bringing forth the word of God and spreading the gospel to various parts of the country. And Paul, getting a letter from the high priest, went out and trying to apprehend these men and women of God or try to stagnate the ministry in terms of what it was moving forth. And so when we looked at that area in the 13th verse, my wife talked about that. And we're going to get in a little bit on that 13th verse. We're going to move on down to the 14th verse. And we're going to see some things that Apostle Paul was talking about also about that 18th verse as we get ourselves open up and get moving here at HNLC Studios. Father God, we thank you. We bless you as always. And as we come before your throne, Father God, we ask you for your wisdom, direction. Lord, make us your conduit and make me your conduit on tonight as I bring forth the word to your people. Father God, bless this break of show as you already has done. Lord, we thank you for the number of people that are coming in and visiting us on tonight. And it's always a blessing to see the many people being a part of the work we're doing here at HNOC Studios at a time of the night as this. And so, Father God, we just thank you. We bless you. We honor you as I go forth, touch the mouth of this priest as he speak the words, not of himself, but to the power of the Spirit. Use me the way you want to use me. And, Lord, help me move forth the way you want me to move forth. In your precious and powerful mighty name, I pray, Lord. Amen. Get back into the bulk of the situation and looking at the book of... Uh, 
of Philippians chapter 3. We look at Paul's word in Philippians chapter 3. But before going to chapter 3, we talk a little bit about the process of Paul uh, not having already obtained. Now, Paul was dealing with this situation in Rome, in uh, not in Romans, but a lot of, even in the book of Ephesians, Paul was dealing with a lot, even in Galatia, when he came against the people of Galatia, dealing with them in the parts of the third verse, he called them foolish. You know, the work that Jesus Christ had done, who allegedly believed the work that Christ had done, he's still not doing today. Because the word of God did make it clear that Jesus had greater work that you make do because I go to my father. But he ran into these, some of these hellacious Jews in Galatia. He had to get after him. He comes right back over here. He did some powerful things on the book of Philipp, uh, the book of Philipp, uh, Philippians. In the book of Philippians, or in Philippi, excuse me, I thought tank tied there. But he said over here in the 12th verse, it's not that I have already obtained. Now, Paul is speaking something very genuine right here. Paul said, I have not come to the point of being where I wanted to be in Christ, also coming off the process of being a stickler of the law. I knew I was apprehended on the road to Damascus. I knew Christ has given me the vision to go forth and do his work. And we saw that clearly, going to the road called straight. We know Ananias was a man who came from the church of white and actually gave him a side bank. Matter of fact, dropped a powerful anointing on him. But Paul did a great work. But what Paul is saying right here, even in the midst of Jesus Christ, touching him, revealing to him, he got to do a great work. Paul said, I still have not obtained, meaning there's still things that all of us as men and women God still deal with in our lives. And I try to get that clear to a lot of people, but sometimes we, 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 we try to find out it's not that we're saying that we are sinners. You know, the word of God made a confession, we should confess with our mouth and believe in our heart, and God raised us up from the dead. The Bible said, Thou shall be saved. But in the midst of being saved, sanctified and filled with the precious power of the Holy Spirit and baptized in the blood of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I declare and decree that on and over your life right now, even on mine, that through the power of God and through the illumination of God, God begins to direct you in a whole different area in terms of how you should be. You once walked this course, as the Word of God speaks it very clear in the book of Ephesians chapter 2, how we all did things that really diametrically opposed the will of God. The Word of God made it very clear when we was not trespasses in sins in the past times. We all done something that wasn't pleasing to God. And the Word of God tells us if we walk up right, there's nothing to hold from us. This is what the Word of God tells us in terms of the Word that was a Proverbs 10 and 22. The blessings of the Lord, it make it rich, and they added no toil. But in the walking and being right with Christ, Paul comes back when he makes a very clear statement. And he said, I have not already apprehended. I have not already apprehended. Let's go back over here to the Amplified Edition and look at this process. And this is the first verse. Because I want to make this very clear in terms of what Paul is saying. Even though Paul being a stickler of a law, and then a man is caught in the work that he's doing and called into the work of Jesus Christ, Paul said, I'm still uh, at mercy and liberty to God for even giving me a chance. That I still remember the things I have done, even though I I was in the road, I was in the road called straight. I was in the house over there on straight. I, I went through the process of probably dying in the house. I went to heaven, and as I went to heaven, I saw the I saw the waters that Jesus Christ was baptized in, and the Bible declared the decree that when Paul came back to that process and the nice and, and uh, anointed him to be that particular worker that Christ wanted him to be. Paul saw some mighty things going on in his life and around his life. And he came to a part of repentance in his life that he really had to understand that Paul said, I've done so much harm to Christ. And I didn't know I was doing all these evil things that, you know, really that harmed him like this. But sometimes we find ourselves doing things with Christ or to Christ. We grieve him. And it's not that we're doing it intentionally. But Paul saw the situation at the point where he's speaking the 12th verse. He said, I have not obtained. Paul said, this deals with having already made perfect. Now, this is what the Amplified Version says. Paul said, I have not already obtained. This deals with having already have not, uh, already have been made perfect. Paul said, I am not perfect because of the things I've done. I came against Christ. I grieved the Holy Spirit. I was killing his people who was bringing forth the word of God. So Paul is really holding on to this this particular dilemma that happened to him. But he's also not letting to hold him back. But as he's moving forth, and as we move forth, and I want to get you to understand this, when God delivers us out of circumstances and situations, we know maybe a drug addiction, maybe sexual addiction, maybe something that you were doing that wasn't quite right in the eyesight of God. I don't know what you were doing. But I, know I was doing some things that wasn't right. But I can clearly see in my mind the things I used to do when I wasn't a Christian, even though I was brought up in a Christian home. I was brought up with a very, very powerful prophet, my mother, Mary. I was a very strong woman of God. 
And I declare, man, the woman of God, there are things that you're going to deal with in your life, and hear me and hear me good, that you're not going to forget about it, but it'll be a reminder to you that Christ has bought you from and what he's really taking you to. And you can look back over your life and see the progress that you have made. This is why Paul said, I'm yet still being made to what Christ really wants you to be. This is why he said, I have not all, I have not now obtained, this deals with already been made perfect, but I press on to lay hold and I grasp to make my own that which is Christ Jesus, that the Messiah has laid hold of me and made me his own. Now, now this, is some, this is some powerful stuff when you think about when he said in the Amplified Edition. He said, not that I have now obtained, this deals with, haven't already been made perfect. Paul said, I haven't gained the status of what I need to be, even though God on the road to Damascus had mercy on me and called me to do some great work. A lot of people talk about Pastor Paul, this and Pastor Paul, that. But you know, it's, it's, Pastor Paul did a great work. He's a great example to what we are as men, man, what we got. But God is trying to see what are you going to do? Everybody talking about what Paul did, what David did, what, what are you going to do? These men left examples of how we should carry our life and be in our life as we go forth as being kingdom representatives. Now, when we come back over to the, the particular area of the King James Version, Paul comes on down here once again, and he speaks another powerful process in here in the 13th verse, in 3 and 13. Brother, I do not also, look here, brother, I do not, he said, I do not myself have apprehended. Now, I want to make sure this, is sound, this ain't too ebonic on you. Brother, I do not count myself as having apprehended. In other words, the things I dealt with in life, even though I understand what I was in the 12th verse, and I have not obtained, even though with Christ, calling me on the road to Damascus, going to persecute his children, uh, his, 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 his saints, that's doing the word of God, the church of the way. And we understand on his way to Damascus, he was stopped and he was thrown from his beast. But when Paul said this right here in the 13th verse, but I do not count myself has been apprehended. Now, before going over to Damascus and doing what he needed to do to God's children, Paul had already had been getting letters from the high priest doing negative things to God's people. And it's the same thing with us. It's the same thing with us, men and women, God. When we were living in our life as being in the book of Ephesians, walked in past time, according to the course of the world, there's things that we did, and, 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 and I hate to say it, some things we're still doing. That we still get working on those things. Everybody's got an iron in the fire. Everybody's got a bone in the closet that they got to work with in order to get that loose out of them and get it out of the closet where it needs to be. And sometimes those bones come right back in the closet. Sometimes those bones continue to keep jumping around to the point they can almost just run you crazy. But in this conversation, <clears throat> in this conversation, Paul comes to a <coughs> kind of choke down a little quick. Paul comes to the point, he said, I do not count myself to have apprehended. I have not gained all that I need to gain as being a, a, a past a stickler of the law. I used to be a, a, a murderer. But when I haven't obtained or haven't I not apprehended. Now, apprehended is to be held back from something. He you, you was apprehended. But Paul said, even in the midst of being apprehended about my past, I'm not going to let that hold me back. It's not going to be something that's going to stop my forward progress because Paul comes over here and he says over this. But one thing I do know, forgetting those things which are behind. Now, Paul knew what his lifestyle was before he actually came to Jesus Christ. And we all knew what our lifestyle was before we came to Jesus Christ. We understand that. And it says it, it, says it very clear in the book of Ephesians and most of us, when you read in the book of Ephesians, <clears throat> if we go up to the book of Ephesians, we look at some things in the book of Ephesians, he tells us some very strong things in the book of Ephesians. I got one of those great Bibles that sticks together, got writing all in it. That's, that's a great kind, man. I got, got show Bibles I take off and I go to places, they're all clean and nice. But my study Bible, they're all clean until they rolled up. I mean, I mark them all up. It's revelation after revelation in these things. And that's the way you want your Bible to be, to let you know when it's all tore up, your life is not tore up. That means you're constantly in it. The word of God declares over here in the book of Ephesians. The Bible said in past times we walked according to the course of the world, according to the prince of the power of the air, pertains to the fact that Satan had an up on us. He had a hand on us. And he really did. He had a hand on me. He had a hand on you. 
and whatever it may have done that you may have done that wasn't in the public eye, God yet saw what was going on. And Satan knows sometimes in your life where he can really get you at. And that's the problem you understand when you're going into the body of Christ, accepting Jesus Christ. The enemy, what Satan, what he tries to do, and you think about the process over in um, Colossians. I get off the book of Philippians. Excuse me, but come back over to the book of Colossians. Look at some of the book of Colossians right quick here. I'm going to pull some strings out of my, I'm going to pull, pull, pull a rabbit out of my hat on this one. Because I just hear the Holy Spirit speaking to me on this particular teaching here. Uh, dealing with this particular area <clears throat> on the book of Colossians. And in the book of Colossians, go to Colossians chapter 2. Still keeping in contact with Paul, dealing with the process in the area of the book of Philippians. In that 13th verse, in that 12th and 13th verse, in the 14th verse. And he read over here, it said, he said, in the 12th verse, it's not that I have already obtained or am I already perfect, but I press on that I may lay hold to that which is Jesus Christ. Or what, which, well, I may lay hold of that which, which is Jesus Christ. In other words, he's trying to lay hold of what laid hold of him. Jesus Christ, who also has, hold, who also has laid hold of me. But it comes in the 13th verse. I want to make sure we get this in here We're, uh, clearly here. And it says in the 13th verse, Brother, I do not count myself as have been apprehended. The one thing I do know, forgetting those things which are behind, I reach to those things which are before. And he uses this term really as an athletic runner who's running a race. It's not the process of swiftness. You know, it's not it's not the quickest one who goes to the top and sees all the applause and glory before how swift he was, but the ones who complete the race in terms of not in the, the, the who finished first, but who completes the work, who gets the well done. Sometimes you can run away too fast and you think you come in the word of God said did not prophesy, did not and God said you get away from your work of iniquity because if you're trying to get ahead of people and try to make yourself seem more better than people to the point of some of your accolades and things you have around you. And God said, Why don't you look at yourself? Why don't you just be an example to why I made you? rather than trying to go around and look at people and think of being something that you're not. Because everybody's got a way they got to get out of here. I like what Jesse Perez said all the time, every soul's got to get in one size hole. What you got to understand is your life is right once you take the breath on this side and make you take the right breath on the right side. So God's not looking at all these things you say you're doing, these, these positions and titles you have. Christ is looking at your heart. And a lot of people, excuse me, say sometimes the people say the sinners, some of the people we look at sinners, they'll get in before we get in. Now, now listen to me, because God looks at their heart while we ridiculing them, and we point our crooked fingers at them. We're doing opposite of what Jesus Christ said that when the woman was called in the act of adultery. You know, if anyone be without sin, you cast a stone. Throw a stone at anybody. You can't really can't throw a stone at anybody. You can't put yourself and say, okay, I'm a man of God and I know I walk all right, but hold on a second, you're still in the flesh. You still got potential to fall. That the Bible says any one of you that you may fall. So we all constantly got to work and believe in the life that we live in, that we got we must get up every morning and every night, constantly pray without ceasing. So Paul comes back over in this area of the 14th verse. Brother, I know I caught myself with being apprehended. One thing I do know, forgetting those things which are behind, I reach forward to the things which are ahead. Now in the 14th verse, he said, I press toward the goal. For the prize of an up call, a upward calling, a upward calling of God in Christ Jesus. Now, I want, the reason I say about that, uh, he said an upward calling, an upward calling of God in Christ Jesus. That's the well done, my faithful son. When you keep pursuing the work that Christ gave you, not based on that you run it to try to be in competition with anybody, but you got to learn how to stay in your lane. As my apostles tell me, great men of God that surround me, old wisdom apostles. And we want to continue to keep Apostle Oscar Walker in our prayers, who lost his wife here just a few days ago. And he's a great mentor in my life. I want to keep him lifted up in prayer as well. And also keep my family lifted up in prayer. Most of you know I lost my brother here a couple of weeks ago, right almost about a couple of weeks ago. And we're still kind of going through that process. But God is just still good and is always uh, in a position to move us forward and knowing that he's pulling his saints out of here in a record time to get with, to get done what he need to get done here on earth. Because we, we see how the time is moving. We see how the plagues and the rumors, the wars, everything it talks about 
over in the book of uh, Mark chapter 13, we come back over here in the book of Timothy, we see, we see the word of God said, no, this in the last days, we, we see all this stuff is coming, but we still got to understand that we got to pray more, as Paul said, pray without ceasing, pray continually without ceasing, this is what we have to do, morning, noon, and night, we got to pray, we got to keep up, we got to keep a song of God in our heart, and we got to keep ourselves moving forward, because the enemy is trying his best to try to apprehend you in me from doing what Christ has called us to do or stop us from moving forward into the progress of reward that he has waiting for us. The word of God says over here in the area of the particular area, I'm going to look at this particular 14th verse once again, uh, once again in the book of um, the book of uh, Phil, uh, in the book of uh, Philippians in this uh, 3 and 14, he's our press toward the goal for a prize of the upper calling of God in Christ Jesus. Now, let me say something about that. Let me go back to the 13th verse, and I want to make sure we understand the 13th and the 14th, because I want to make some difference between here. Because I want to read it in the Amplified Version, also in the 14th verse, but I'm going to go back to the 13th verse. He said, Brethren, I call myself not that he have been apprehended. Whenever you look at the word, he's been He's been caught. Apprehended mean a person's been caught in whatever travel they're doing. In Paul's case, in this situation, Paul's not letting his past stop any pro forward progress that he's doing because of what he used to be when he was a stickler of the law, when he was out there persecuting the Christians. Paul knew very well the things that he was been plagued with in his mind and what he'd done to displease Jesus Christ. But the process on the road to Damascus, God spared his life. And called him to be one of the greatest men in the Bible. The same thing with you. Your progress in life is how you come to Christ and how you admonish him and how you adore him. And you take it seriously about the work he's doing in you. A lot of people say, you, you're too serious about this. Well, it, 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 you, better, you better believe you better be serious about it. Because the time is moving and it's moving rapidly and it's moving quickly. The word of God makes a statement. The word of God says, it'll come a time when the when the months, the years will be like months, and the months will be like weeks. And we see that right now. We're getting ready to move into another season already. It's like we just came into the summer season. It came to a new year, January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August. We're already in here already. It's like it's five weeks. It's like it's just a month. And we're already back in, getting ready to go into the winter season. So God is really letting us know. And with that progress, the work that Christ is doing as we continue to get our work done, he's showing you how rapidly the times are moving. And it's no time to play around. It's really no time we get on down and we're going to talk about Paul says, it's not for you to get in bickering conversation with your brother and sister about who's big and who's tough and who's this, that, and the other. You got to learn how to put yourself in position and learn how to walk upright and believe and understand what the word of God says over in the book of John 13, 34, and 35. But he said it's a new covenant in place. It's not about who you got and who I am, who are this, that, and the other. You can brag about that all you want, but God's not going to look at that when you get yourself up into the kingdom of God. He's going to understand that you got to get a copy of every idle deed and every idle work that you have done. It's like the talent you read over there in the book of Matthew, chapter 25, the 14th verse. When that king, that, that king went off and left those talents, that he left those talents for those men, one, one, five, one, three, one, two, one, one. But the one who had the one talent, bear the talent, because when you understand the process of the Holy Spirit, anytime God gives you just any kind of talent, it can be used for the kingdom of God. It can always be progressed to the point that it can receive more, uh, um, uh, to say, added to as it needs to be added. In other words, upgrades. You know, the word of God talks about that process in the book of uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, it's about the process of 12 gifts. And he talks about the process, he said the gifts are designed to manifest, but they're all designed to give them by one spirit. It's not a bunch of spirits given to give us all one spirit. Every gift, gift comes from God, not from man, from God. So it's God who actually monitors the gifts. Then when you pray to him, he sets you in the right place with the people who can have that character in you to move forth. I talk about the NFL and things like that, people, you know, in, in the lead. You know, they're going to, they, they, these, these draft men, draft the people who can fit good in they, in they, on their teams, can help their team to do a forwarding progress in what they're doing. So Paul begins to speak about this process over here in the area of the book of um, of the book of Philippians, in, the, in that particular uh, thirteen verse, I do not count myself have been apprehended, but one thing I do know: uh, forgetting those things which are behind, all the past. And this is kind of what God says about being a new creature. But being a new creature, 
most of you know, you come to a confession. As the word of God says in Romans 10, 8, 9, but say thou the word of God near thee in our mouth. Confess and believe God raised the son from the dead, thou shalt be saved. So Paul goes on to talk about the price of in the 14th verse. He says, I'm pressed. I press toward a goal. He's not saying a bunch of people around him to make him feel good. He's got to work out his own walk with Christ. You got to work out your own walk with Christ. Doesn't matter how many people you have around as being a leader. What's going to happen is how you're going to lead the sheep and how God's going to evaluate you as being a leader. And the word of God talks about sometimes, we talks about a lot about the evaluation of leader in 1 Peter 1 and 5. And those who walk in opposite of 1 Peter 1 and 5, then they had a role. Because this is not, this, the ministry is not to be called braggadocious. We don't get into that. People a little bit just immature get into that. But players on the squad never get into that. They work as a team. And the body is a team with one head. And that head is the Godhead. And that's Jesus Christ. All our rules and regulations that operate the body comes from him and him only. Not man. Not Listen to me. Y'all, people don't like when I tell you this. It don't come from the apostle. It don't come from the prophet. It come from the evangelist. come from the pastor. Come to, God pours into them. It's been unified to help the body of Christ to stay in order. He don't give them gifts to be able to look upon and look down on one another and say, I'm a better apostle, I'm a better preacher, I'm a better bishop, I'm a better... It don't work like that. People who are immature in their mind think that way. My team is better than your team. I got more prophets on my team. I got more... Well, okay. But when you get out of here, where you going? Who, who you taking with you? You understand what I'm saying? So you got to understand how you got to look at yourself as being in a leadership position and how you actually take care of the sheep and teaching them how to actually receive that relay. You know, we talk about track and field and Olympics coming up. Those different batons that pass each other's hand. It's a matter of my time of running uh, track and field, NCAA track and field. It's a matter of time to take the, 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 the relay and hand the baton in between the international zone into that man's hand. It's, a, it's, a, it's all split timing. That when you got an you got a, a, a oncoming force coming at you with a great speed, and you got to be able to gauge yourself quick enough to be able to get out and match that speed and receive that baton to keep the race flowing, maybe at a world class pace, whatever it may be. But it's the same thing in the Word of God. Us as being leaders in the body of Christ, I continue to train and teach people. Number one, how to have love for their brother and sister. Not only have love, but understand how to walk in their giftings. And understand how to walk in their giftings, they really need to come to a point of understanding how these gifts play out in the eyesight of Christ. If any man to be in Christ, he's a new creature. What a creature tells me that he's got to be a loving creature. The Word of God talks about the process of the Galatians 5 and 14, about the laws of the kingdom. All the laws, whether the Old Testament, New Testament, it's still, it's still it's love. It's all love. The Word of God talks about in Galatians 5, I think 22 and 23. Talk about the progress of love, joy, peace, happiness, gentleness, meekness. All that's a part of understanding those are the nine fruits of the Spirit. And those have to go up in cooperation with the nine gifts. If you don't have that, you got the, if you're walking in any of the, tw- the nine gifts of the Spirit, you're going to have to incorporate the nine fruits of the Spirit to be able to please God in the walk. This is called walking in an office. Not because of education, not because of degrees, not because of titles, not because of how long you've been in ministry. It's how you discipline yourself as being a person who can really understand how it is to mimic Christ. Now, when I say that, I want to look at some of the book of Colossians. We talked a little bit about the book of Colossians earlier. Paul speaks over in the book of Colossians to the people of Colossians, and he comes over this particular second chapter, and he speaks something very powerful over here in the area of the 10th verse. Paul says in the book of Colossians, really running off what we're speaking over here in the Paul's 13 to 12 to uh, 13 to 14, and this is you right here. When Christ understands that when you come to the confession, when you come to confession, with Christ, that's Romans 10, 8, 9, believe in your heart that Christ raised itself from the dead, then Christ said, okay, now, you accept it because you actually you actually admitted to being a sinner, and now you want to be forgiven for your sins, so God being like a supreme judge, he appoints Jesus Christ, and Jesus Christ appoints the Holy Spirit to you, it's like a person who's been in prison, if I could say that correctly, and when the judge comes, and how do you plead? Some people feel that you don't have to plead a guilty case. You can walk on into the kingdom now, but that ain't right. Uh, because, because, no, you, you, 
you gotta you gotta forgive for what you have done. The fees will tell you what you've done. The fees will tell you there's things you've done behind closed doors. Matter of fact, you, you, if, I, if I can push over here a little bit and look at the fees, if you go back to the book of the fees, fees bring a very strong case against all of us over the fees chapter two. Ephesians says, Ephesians chapter, excuse me, Ephesians chapter 2, he says it like this in Ephesians chapter 2. The Bible said, when you were quickened, when you were dead, to get a trespass and sin. Now, that, that's right there, letting you know, you've done something. And in the midst of you confessing, your Romans 10, 8, 9, it's pulling this off of you. Because you've done something. You can say it before people say you've never done it. And that's in the, no, no, you know, whatever's in the dark, it's going to come to light. Whatever's spoken in the inner ear, on the rooftop. So Christ really gets you to understand that there are some things in your life that you have done. And unlike Paul's situation that he have done, but Paul's not letting those things hold him back because now he's coming to the confession or walk with Jesus Christ. Even though the enemy may come at you and try to work with those things that you've done in the past, try to get them to come back in your face. And that's what the enemy does. He, he, when, you, when, you, when, you, when you ask God to forgive you for something, and the word of God says, I'll throw it in the sea of forgiveness. The enemy's got that special kind of scuba deer. I know what I'm talking about. Y'all don't want to admit to it. He got that special kind of scuba deer that he'll go down and get that sin and throw it back in your face. When you're all alone, they talk about the process. How an idle mind is the devil's workshop. And how he can cause those things you used to like and he know how to put the right people around you to make you think you can get back there. So you got to really watch your surroundings, who you hang with. And it really is guilty by association. But when Paul makes this case against all of us in terms of how we need to really admit to the point that we are sinners and then receive what Christ has in store for us, just as it does in the prison system, how do you plead? I plead guilty. Not I know that you plead guilty. I give you what they call a, a, a lawyer. And I give you a lawyer, then I point you to what they call them, uh, what they call them guys, um, uh, your, your probation officer. So the Holy Spirit is like your probation officer. You know, Jesus appoints you one of the angels. The angels walk with you to help you, lead you in all truth. He pricks your mind and makes you think, well, you can't do that over there. You know, if you did, you go back, you open up another can of worms. You go back to the stuff you used to do. So what the Holy Spirit does, he helps guide you. He tells you, well, go pray. Uh, if there's anything you need, ask me. Call him. I'm right there with you. I'm, I'm, just, like a, I'm just like a butler. And if you understand the power of a butler, a butler opens up doors. Sometimes we need a butler in our lives to open up opportunities and doors for us to go through when we can't go through them. So when the Word of God tells us out here in the book of Ephesians, he says, when you're as quick and when you're know, trespassing and sins, in the past times you walked according to the course of the world, look what he says, according to the prince of the power of the air of the spirit, and I work in the children of disobedience. Among you also in your conversation in the past times, Fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, the what he's saying, when nature, your children are wrapped, even as others. So he told it on everybody. If you're on this earth, you it's, you, you you done something. It's not saying that you got to stay there because Romans makes it very clear. You can't continue to keep sinning, not a grace abounds. When you come to Romans 10, 8, 9 to make the confession, you, you need no grace and mercy is there. But you got to try to make, you got to try to turn, get away from that. You got to pray and ask God to help you with whatever addiction that you're dealing with, whatever you're going through. And the word of God comes back over and says that the enemy, his job is to get you to understand uh, almost opposite in the scripture, but understanding the truth of how Christ looks at you once you come into salvation. And the word of God makes it very clear, almost the same things in the book of Ephesians, but he says it different here in the book of Colossians 2, in this particular 10th verse. He said, you are complete which is the head of all principalities and powers in whom you are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands. Now, that's the inviting of the Holy Spirit. That's when you confess. That's the circumcision that comes into your heart. It's not made with man's circumcision, but the power of God's circumcision. That's why the Word of God says in the book of Ephesians, the Word of God is quick and it's sharp and it's two-edged sword. It sears the very narrow bone, the very tender movements of the muscle. It can get in there without making a mark. So what the word of God does, he does a cut to heal and not a cut to kill. Surgeon does a cut, you know, when he make a cut on you, he's making a cut to heal. He's opening you up to make that cut, make heal back properly. But when the enemy comes, he cuts to kill. He want to he wanna open you up and let you bleed out. So we can't allow that to happen in our lives. So when we understand the word of God, he says in the 10th verse, and he makes it very clear, you are complete in him which is the head of all principalities and power. Now, that's the same word in Ephesians 1.21. You read Ephesians 1.21. He comes back over in the 11th verse. 
For you are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands. Now that is what's the way of the cross. And that comes back on Romans 6 and 3. You talk about Romans 6 and 3. You write that down, you know what you look at that. Matter of fact, Romans 6, 3 and 5. And, and verse 5, you read that. And the Bible said, And putting off the sin of the flesh was circumcised with the circumcision of Christ. Now putting out the sin of the flesh with the circumcision of Christ. Now all this is all this is dealing with, whether you want to look at it or not, you understand, it's all dealing with Philippians. Because Paul is really in the Philippians speaking about the progress, not only his Damascus experience, but now that he come to do the work of the kingdom of God, and he comes to the people of Philippi, over the Philippians, and he begins to speak to them about the process of how he have made the point that he's he's willing to move forward. Now all this is all this Paul was doing when he wrote, he wrote this letter to the the people of Philippi. Paul was in a strenuous position. He was in prison. You know, we talk about the process, and I believe in some of my notes I was reading about how uh, Philip was the son of um, I think it was the son of um, I believe it was Alexander. I believe it was something about. I'm going to get my notes called. I got to go back and get those notes right on the only understand it. But 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 the city of Philippi played a major role in the mimicking of the Europe. It was a good gate to, to, to Europe that opened up the, 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 the gospel that's going to flow into Rome at that time. So it, it, that's another story. We get into that's some history stuff, but I want to teach you revelational stuff here. But when the word of God comes in here, it tells you that even the book of Colossians, when you go over and jump to this particular area of the 12th verse, he talks about you buried with him in baptism but you are also raised with him, look at through faith and the operations. Now that word operations is how you carry yourself in, in conforming the rules and regulations of the kingdom of God. I heard Dr. Dell Wilson say the rules and regulations that if you if, if you know if, if, if you obey all my commands, all the statutes, all the precepts and judgments won't come. So that's that's one of the biggest rules in the kingdom of God. If you obey all my commands, all my statutes, all my precepts. And then it's judgments that won't come. If you open, if you disobey that, like you talk about the part of Cain and Abel. Now you do well, you know. I ain't, it's not that I rejected your sacrifice, but if you do well, I, I, I got you covered. But if you do evil, sin is waiting at the door. What is it? He marks his brother, and now he worries about people who want to kill him because he's been marked. But the word of God, you know, that's that's another teaching right there also. But the word of God comes back and said in the book of Colossians twelve, uh, uh, two and twelve. Buried with him in baptism, when you are also raised with him through the operations of God who has raised him from the dead. The same power that raised God from the dead, that operation works in you now that you come to the belief. He comes over in the 13th verse, he says, been dead in your sins, your unsickness and your flesh. And that's what the, that's what Ephesians was talking about. I mean, yeah, that's what the book of Ephesians was talking about back over there, walking in the, the ways of the world when you was quick in your trespass and sin in past time. And he comes on the 13th verse of Colossians 2 and 13. He said, being dead and uncircumcised in your flesh, that he quickened you together with him, having, look here, having given all, having forgiven you all trespasses, all your trespasses. The Bible declares in the 14th verse, blotting out the handwriting of an ordinance that was against us. Now, that, that's, what, that's what Satan, he, he, when we was walking, when we was, when we was in our Ephesians, when we was doing that stuff in the Ephesians, Walking out there in the world, doing whatever we want to do, what wasn't pleasing to God. That's what the enemy wants to hold on you. And that's what the Apostle Paul is talking about in Philippians. Paul is speaking to Philippians. I know I was a sticker of law. I know I did bad things. I know I was getting led from high priest. I know when I got on the road to Damascus, I understood that I was corn, I was kicking against the pricks. And Jesus said, Paul, Paul, why you can continue to kick against the pricks? You know, he said, well, who are our Lord? You can't keep continuing to persecute me. So we understand that Paul had some things that he was dealing with that wasn't quite, I don't believe Paul knew about Jesus Christ, but all the stuff that was going on in that particular leadership that he was in, they knew about Jesus Christ, but these men, they really opposed the word of God. They came against the word of God. And when you come down here to the area of the book of Philippians, Philippians, let's go down here to the area of the book of Philippians, and let's look at this area over here in this particular um 16th, or well, the 15th verse, so we get out to the 15th verse. He said, Well, let us as many are mature, having this mind, and if anything you think otherwise, God will reveal even this to us. He says, Nevertheless, to the degree that we have already obtained, 
Now he said something right there. He's gonna he's gonna let to the degree you have already obtained. See, when you when you know better, you do better. Now Christ is gonna judge you based on what you already know. Now, if you're giving in to Christ and you say you love Christ, you're still doing some more crazy stuff behind closed doors. And of course, I'm gonna I'm gonna judge you to the degree that I know you know you knew it. So I mean I mean I'm mercy and grace is there, but you knew what you was doing. Sometimes we do things to one another. We know it's not right in Christ. And we don't come back to Christ and ask him to forgive us for what we have done. Or we don't ask the person to be face to forgive us for what they've done. We, we yet go like cowards behind closed doors without wanting to apologize. That's one of the biggest things I do. I apologize. If I have done something to somebody says something, I apologize to them. Many times I run across people who just, you know, even in the midst of the work I do here and do a lot of designs and arts for people, I, they, I get shammed. Some people that... They take they take the art, they do it, they, they run off. They never come back anymore. They never pay them to do anything. So the word of God telling you in this particular scripture right here, therefore let as many I'm a tool have this mind. And if any of you think otherwise, God will reveal even to us, nevertheless, to the degree that we have already obtained. Now that's what's now you gotta understand the fourteenth verse to understand that fifteenth verse. The Bible says when you're pressing on, Paul says, I'm pressing on. And what, what, what pressing on to the mark of a higher goal, meaning I'm accepting the fact that I have now become a Christian. But if they do anything other than what you said you would do, then God says, I'm going I'm 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 to make a reveal to you. In other words, we look over in the 14th verse of the book of Philippians. Uh, some of these particular areas of Scripture tells you, you look at some of these breakdowns, it gives you some... Um, some uh, you know, if you break down, I look at breakdowns quite a bit, but you know, I read them, but you know, I don't stay in them like that and I don't teach out of them. I just teach them. I'm a brother to, I just keep on, I, what I do, I keep on concentrating on the word until the Holy Spirit gives me some. Sometimes I've been on a scripture, I've been on a chapter for a week, and I just keep on saying it over and over again until God gives me something. I write it down, I write it down, I write it down, I write it down, and I know something comes from God. So a lot of scriptures, a lot of services that I, uh, my wife will tell you that I study on. I don't bring these things out to probably this, like this right here. I've been studying this for three weeks, and I just own this particular verse because there's so much in it that he gave me, and I, and I bring it out at this particular time. But Paul makes that point in the book of Philippians. When you look at the book of Philippians in that 15 verse, he said, For there who are many of us are mature, having this mind, I mean this mind of Christ Jesus, and if anyone think otherwise, God will reveal. Now let's look at the 15 verses we've seen right there. The Bible said, let us therefore have many as being perfect, mature, being what? This mind, having one mind, one Christ, and what he's done on the cross. The Bible declares down here, say, if any man think otherwise in that mind, let it be revealed to us unto him through the Spirit. Now look what it says right here. He said, if any man have any otherwise minded, God shall reveal even this unto to you, excuse me, unto you. This means that some have already actually otherwise other minded by through the words of Paul's Holy Spirit was given to show them as a right way in which they should pull back to the cross. You know what Paul is saying that you can't walk with Christ and live over there. You can't, you know what I'm saying? You can't say you love God. And then you, you know, you hate your brother and sister. You, 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 I don't like him. I don't work. I don't, what well, is, you know, and, and you find it a lot. And, and, it, and it's in a lot of that, you know, excuse me, I'm saying this, a lot of it's among us Christians. You, you don't see the people in the world saying that. I mean, they're your friend. They hang out. They do things what they want to do. But it's only among us Christians. Sometimes with us folk. A lot of our us folk. I say us folk. Y'all understand what I'm saying? We do that with one another to the point we feel that we, we're getting some kind of establishment and we're a little better than everybody else. But it's not so. Because if you ain't understand the number one rule in the Bible, which is L-O-V-E, then you can't move forward in that. It doesn't matter how much you're teaching them, how much you're supposed to be good. If you can't love your brother and sister and then treat them right and then do right by them, then well, you, you can't say that, you know, I'm, I'm, I love Christ. Because if you hate him, the word of God tells you that. How you say you love me? You don't. You don't. Oh, I don't mess with him. I don't. I just these cliches we make up. Sometimes you got to learn to live without people. Where, where that come from? What kind of stuff is that? You, you know what I'm saying? I mean, how would we get that stuff from? I just feed him with a long handle spoon. Excuse me. 
all this stuff we have implemented into the body of Christ and have saturated and has really uh, tore down the barriers of love and how we should be toward one another. I, can't, I, I ain't going to extend this a little bit long because I know it's about 11 or 9. I got to get out of here. But man and woman of God, it's always a pleasure, always an opportunity to come for you guys. Father God, we thank you for the man and woman of God who's with us on the night. Lord, we just decree your word. We just declare your word in the spirit. Lord, we thank you for the revelation, the information, and direction, and understanding that you have given this priest on tonight to give to your people. Let it be a word that will help them in their walk. Lord, let it be a glide in their stride and a hop in their step. Let it be known in the spirit, Father God, that he has begun a great work in them will continue that work complete until the day of Jesus Christ. Lord, make them strong in the Lord and the power of your might. They may continue to believe and declare and agree that you're the only God. And it's to you the only God that all things are possible to him that believe. Father God, we thank you for this time. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray, Lord. Amen. You heard a lot of typing here that was going on. That was my wife in the background doing some work. So, uh, man, we got to look here. Blessing to you guys. Appreciate you joining us over here. All the men and women got on our YouTube team. We thank you guys for coming in and being with us. Also, it's a pleasure. It's always a pleasure to be with you guys. We thank God for you being here. We're going to pull you guys out at this time. You guys have a good morning. It's just about in, in the name of Jesus, all right? Okay, all you guys are coming to my actually, um, and so I'm actually Riverside Station. We're going to have a woman of God coming on Riverside real soon. The little one, look out for her real soon, uh, the little one. She has a power show coming up, I think, Tuesday. You can catch on the BTR show. You go to our actually uh, Facebook station. You look under the little one. It's a purple butterfly. She has all the information about the shows that takes place right there. Until then, hey, look, all you guys on our actually Riverside, it's a blessing. God bless you guys. We love you guys. All right? And all the men and women got us on our Facebook channel. It's always a blessing to be with you guys. All my team that's always coming out over India. A great group of people that are always coming out. They're always hearing the word of God. All you see, man. And it's just a blessing to hear them and get, just gain the knowledge and wisdom we have to get to them as they continue to go forth out there. We want to keep them lifted up in prayer out there because it's a lot of, we really want to keep India in prayer. You know, it's a lot of, the COVID is really, just really, it's really bad out there. You know, a lot of things is going on. We really got to keep India in our prayers. It's, a, it's, it's really a lot of situations going on out there. And we love them because they are brothers and sisters. We love them also. We can't sit here in the States and say we're fine and they over there suffering. No, we got to pray for them. And whatever it may be that we can do, and what little bit we can do, whatever we can offer in prayer, let's do it and keep on doing that. For our sisters and brothers out there in India, as well as in Pakistan, all those men and women got in Africa, over in all the other foreign countries that's going on. We want to make sure. Uh, we keep them in prayer as well as here in the United States. But we thank God for those men and women got out there. Hey, it's a blessing to be with you guys. Y'all take care. We love you guys. Until next time, we t- we'll say good night to you guys, okay? And I tell you, we're still kind of waiting on our show to clear up with our actually, um, our actually station over here with our, uh, our speaker team. And yeah, still kind of rolling. We're going to pull them off in the hand in just a minute. Spreaker guys, we love you guys. We thank you guys for being with us. Um, we really, um, we adore being with you guys here. Yeah, we really do. We thank God for you guys. And we just want to let you guys know we love you. Hey, look, y'all take care. We'll talk to you guys real soon, okay?